welcome back. This should be a really short video. Um, this is the video where we're going to actually look at the organic mechanism of aconitase. And after this video, we'll look at aconitase's function in a little bit more detail. Hi, welcome back to the playlist on the TCA cycle. What we're going to do in this video is we're going to focus on another small segment of the TCA cycle. Specifically, it's this, oops, let me get my tool, it's this segment right here. And this segment is catalyzed by an enzyme called aconitase. Now, sometimes you may hear me refer to this enzyme as aconitate hydratase, and that's because they're the same enzyme. Okay. And as we'll see in later videos, aconitate hydratase or aconitase has other functions inside the cell. Right now, we're going to focus on hollow aconitase, or in other words, the hollow enzyme form, and its function in the TCA cycle. Okay, so I'll draw the mechanistic steps in blue. Okay, so the very first step of this mechanism is going to be a proton transfer. So there exists a protonated histidine and in the resting state of aconitase's active site. And so the enzyme is going to facilitate, get my tool, the enzyme is going to facilitate the proton transfer onto that hydroxyl group. And what that effectively is going to do is that's going to make this protonated water group, okay, that's a very good leaving group, okay, and then what's going to happen is there's also a deprotonated serine residue in the active site, okay, and there's a lone pair on this serine or this alkoxide residue, and it's going to deprotonate right here. And remember your basic steps of an elimination reaction. Remember that in, in the case of a concerted step like this, you have a proton transfer followed by loss of the leaving group. This particular mechanism has, has a has a characteristic being a bimolecular elimination, meaning it's an E2, meaning that the proton transfer and the loss of the leaving group are in the same step. It's a concerted process. Okay, But also notice one other thing, and we're going to have a whole video on this after this video, but notice something. Our leaving group, our water group, is on a, on a dash, right? So that means that if we've drawn the molecule in the staggered conformation, that means that the proton has to be on a wedge. So if you're looking at this bond right here, if you're looking at this bond in the staggered conformation, the leaving group has to be anti-paraplanar to uh, the leaving group, okay? At least the proton has to be anti-paraplanar to the leaving group. Okay. Notice that we also have a proton right here, but that one is not anti-paraplanar, so that's not the one that gets abstracted. But anyways, we'll have a whole video on that in excruciating detail. Okay, so the serine alkoxide deprotonates here, and you generate the alkene with the loss of the leaving group. Right. And so in this step of the mechanism, you end up losing H2O. You end up losing water, and in the process, you generate this intermediate of aconitase called cis, called cis aconitate. Okay, and the reason it's called cis aconitate is because number one, it's aconitate, but also because these two carboxyl groups happen to be cis to each other. In fact, if you were to label the double bond with absolute configuration, it would be Z because the two highest priority groups, which both happen to be the carboxyl groups, are on the same side of the double bond, therefore it's a Z double bond, and the carboxyl groups are cis to each other, therefore it's cis aconitate. You could potentially also have a trans aconitate, but that particular intermediate is not observed by this enzyme. Okay. Then what's going to happen is the histidine is going to reprotonate itself, and it's going to get the proton from water. So a water is allowed into the active site. In fact, it's the same water that got eliminated first. And when, when the water gets deprotonated, the effective hydroxide is going to attack this carbon right there, the carbon that I'm highlighting in blue, and that's going to force this pi bond to come out and abstract the proton from the protonated serine, both regenerating the serine alkoxide and the protonated histidine. Now I want to point your attention to one thing in this mechanism that's also pretty important. Notice how this carboxyl group right here, this carboxyl group and the hydroxyl group that was added are on the same side um, of the carbon chain, right? If you were to look at this bond, both of those um, are going down. They're both on dashes, okay? And notice how even though this hydroxyl group is on a dash, the hydrogen that was added 
through the proton transfer with the serine residue is on a wedge. So this particular type of hydration, this is called an anti, an anti addition. Okay. Remember from your organic chemistry, there are syn additions and there are anti additions. In fact, when you did organic chemistry, you couldn't often control exactly which one you got. Sometimes you got a mix of enantiomers and diastereomers. This particular type of molecule, in fact, this is, by the way, isocitrate. Okay? This particular isocitrate is the only one that's observed. Okay? You don't get any diastereomers, you don't get any enantiomers or any of that. This is the only one that's observed. So when you draw isocitrate, it's important that you draw, at least in the staggered conformation, this hydrogen anti to this hydroxyl group. And that's the mechanism by which you get isocitrate through the, through the uh, reaction of aconitase. So I hope this video gave you a little bit of intuition on aconitase. In the next video, we're going to go into a little more, more detail on the mechanism. And after that, we're going to look at aconitase's functions inside the cell. See you soon.